Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. You may have noticed an extra white handout that was given to you today called the Year of Prayer. That's because I'm calling for the people of God to enter into a year of prayer. Now, I'm not suggesting that you're not already praying. Let me make that clear. I know you already pray uh, in your devotional time, etc. What I'm asking for is that you pray just a bit more. Perhaps a bit longer. Perhaps a little bit more fervently. Why am I asking for this from you? I don't think I need to explain it to you. I, it is needed. We all know what's going on around the world, Afghanistan, Haiti, many other places where, where the church of God is being persecuted actively and Christians are being killed every day. Just the, the poverty, the famine, the heartache that encompasses our world so many people are uh, crying out for something in their life that means more than just waking up and making it through the day. So I'm calling for more prayer because it's only a strong, vital, healthy, energetic, enthusiastic church that's full of God's love that can make a difference. You see, we are on the front lines of bringing God's love, His gospel, His truth to the world. And so, and I'm not just talking about St. Francis, but I'm talking about all churches that call upon Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. And so I'm asking you to pray uh, for us here at St. Francis, for our diocese, and all the churches in our diocese, for our province here in the United States, which also includes Canada and uh, parts of Mexico and whatnot, we've got about a thousand Anglican churches, part of our province. And I'm also calling you to pray for our global church. Anglicans around the world, around there's about 80 million of us around the world, plus our partners in Christ Jesus and other denominations. All the churches of God must proclaim the gospel with truth and vitality and energy and love. And so I'm calling for prayer because only by the power of God can the church be what he wants it to be. We can strive with all of our efforts, but if God is not preparing the ground, if God is not preparing the hearts of people, then they are not going to receive and hear the message. So, I've prepared this little handout to help you in your prayers. It begins with the acrostic I've talked about before, uh, Acts, A-C-T-S, like the book of Acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. I give you a few prayers there to help you in your prayers. Some people are very good at extemporaneous prayer and just can kneel and pray without giving it any thought. Others struggle with that kind of prayer. And it's helpful to have a prayer in front of you that is written down and ready to go. Some people say that uh, prayers that are written out like that aren't real prayers. Well, I disagree. The Word of God is written out, it's the Word of God. It is what it is. Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer, and we pray that on a regular basis. I believe any prayer, whether it's extemporaneous or written out, if it's prayed fervently from a heart that loves God, God receives it. So you begin with adoration and confession and thanksgiving as a way of preparing yourself. And then you move into supplication where you're praying 
as I'm calling you to do for this year. Now I know, and I've talked about this before, it's amazing how things get in the way. And it's true for anything in our life, whether we set a goal to clean our house or I'm going to get that closet cleaned out. What gets in the way? The phone rings, the cell phone goes off, the car dies, uh, the cat gets sick. I mean, it's amazing what happens to get in the way of our goals. And especially when we want to do something spiritual. So I want to encourage you not to let those things stop. And then sometimes people, when they go to begin a time of prayer, they don't actually feel worthy. Well, I haven't really been living a good life. You know, I haven't been close to God. Well, who am I to pray? God loves you. If you call upon God as your Lord and Savior, then And then finally, one last word of advice. Just set aside the time. Make it a, a morning part of your ritual. Everybody has a morning ritual just about. I know I do. And if you can just, you know, add that in there, if you don't already have a morning devotion, maybe it's better for you in the afternoon or evening. Whatever works for you, just set aside that time. And you can use the prayers that I've given you, or you can use your own prayers. You can look for prayers online, although you need to be careful about that and make sure that God will prayers, and not prayers that uh, are not for our Lord and Savior. So I want to call you to pray that God's grace, God's mercy, God's power will fall upon His church here and all over the world. So let's begin with prayer right now. Almighty God, as we begin this year of prayer together, I pray that you would help us uh, to pray, that you would strengthen us to pray, that you would block any hindrances from keeping us from prayer. Lord, that you would help us do the thing that you call us to do in your word, and that's to spend time with you in prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of the people as we call upon them. In your name we pray. 